Hi everyone, I'm Jojo Aquino. I'm a traveler, photographer, and videographer, and I inspire women to travel and shoot beautiful travel photos through guides, videos, and photography tips at travelingpetitgirl.com. In today's video, I travel to Shargao by myself, and I'll share with you what to do, where to go, what to eat, and how to get around. I'll also share with you mistakes to avoid for smooth and easy travel. So let's get started with a solo female traveler's guide to Shargao and 10 mistakes to avoid, because you do not want to be like me. <laughs> On day one, I actually didn't do much. I arrived in the afternoon, got settled in my Airbnb, and rode on a motorbike to Cloud9 for surfing lessons, but that didn't happen because I came during low tide. So I ended up running a bicycle and rode myself over to Hirana Surf Resort to eat. I ordered the hummus plate, parmesan fries, sagot gulaman while lounging on a giant pillow with a dog on my lap, and then after that, I went home. Which brings me to my first mistake, biking at night with no headlight. If you run a bicycle, double check to make sure it has a headlight or call for Habal Habal to bring you home instead. You see, I wasn't thinking so I decided to ride in the dark. So listen to me talk to myself but also listen to me lose my shit. <laughs> yeah, don't be like me. Alrighty, day two. This is when the fun started happening. So before the Sohoto Cove tour, I got lost on my way to Brava Resort, the meetup point. So mistake number two, not allowing extra time to travel to the meetup point. Leave earlier than you think in case you get lost so that you don't hold back your tour or get left behind. And if you rented a bicycle, here's mistake number three, loosely placing your belongings in your basket instead of inside your bag. Because I was in a rush, my phone decided to jump out of the basket and onto the road. Now I have more cracks on my phone. So it takes about 3 hours to reach Sohotung Cove, and on a boat with a loud engine, you'll be left with a ringing in your ears, especially if you're sitting right next to it, which is mistake number 4. So to avoid that, bring earbuds or earplugs. Otherwise, bring something to read or bask in the ambience. Sohotung Cove is beautiful. It reminded me of Koron and Bohol. It was like a mix of chocolate hills and lagoons. Do you see how my purse is wet? My expensive mirrorless camera and iPhone was inside. So mistake number 5 is bringing a purse instead of a waterproof bag. So bring a waterproof bag. They're sold everywhere in Shargao. At the cove, we hit 3 spots. The first is Hagukan Cave, a cave where you swim underwater to enter. It's dark inside and the only source of light is through the entrance underwater. And it's really pretty in there, kind of luminescent. And you don't have to worry about hitting your head while swimming through because the guides help you with that. The next spot is Makukuop Cave. Over here, you get to do a little spelunking in chest deep water. Or if you're petite like me, it's neck deep water. At this point, my GoPro started acting up so I wasn't able to film inside, but it was pitch black anyway. What was awesome about the spot is that you get to climb stalactites and stalagmites to reach a diving board. It's about 12 feet high and once you're there, you can't back out. It's not that high anyway, but it's still a good thrill. And the last spot is the Stingless Jellyfish Sanctuary. I really, really wished I had footage, but my GoPro broke at this point. It turned out water had leaked into the battery compartment. So that makes mistake number six, neglecting to rinse your camera gear anytime it touches salt water. Salt water is corrosive, so always rinse your gear or anything in general that touches salt water. In the sanctuary, you can't swim with the jellyfish or their tentacles will fall off. Plus, everyone's sunblock and mosquito repellent will contaminate the water, which will make their tentacles fall off. And you can't pick them up either or their tentacles will fall off. But what you can do is touch them. And it's wonderfully eerie. <laughs> and the last part of the tour was lunch. And guess what? It comes with rum and beer. At the tour, I met a solo traveler, Angelique, who invited me to dinner with friends she'd met on another tour. So we met up at Kermit's, a restaurant known for their pizza. When you go here, arrive as early as possible because the wait is pretty long, like 45 minutes. But if you do end up waiting, you can always order drinks at the bar. And yes, the pizza does live up to the hype. Day 3, this is when it got even more fun. I had time to stop by Big Shargao, a coffee shop with interior decoration goals. You can go here for a quick bite to eat on your way to anywhere. So on my way to the resort, I came across mistake number 7, failing to test your bike brakes or not knowing how else to brake. So avoid this by making sure you test your brakes or jump out of your bicycle. I almost ran into two people, so I ended up crashing into a wall instead. I walked away totally fine, thank goodness. 
So Kurihidor Island, it was only an hour away and you get to share a hut with your new buddies. Which was awesome because on my tour, we were all ladies and our tour guide was the only guy. The hike to the top of the island is scenic. You walk through the town proper, pick pens, and then the beach before hiking up. So mistake number eight, forgetting to bring your footwear. I know this is obvious, but if you're used to walking barefoot, you usually forget where you leave your slippers. So I ended up hiking barefoot. And for the most part, it was actually doable. I made it through the hot rocks, but it started to get unbearable when it got too pokey. But maybe you're like me. Maybe you're secretly a masochist. No, just kidding. It actually got too much that my tour guide, Simon, let me his slippers. Whew. And once you're at the top, you will feel amazing because the ground is softer. No, just kidding. Well, actually that too. But there's something about blue skies and open field of grass and a breeze through your hair that feels amazing. I even think it's better to go barefoot once you're at the top. Do the hippie thing, you know? You'll feel so light after. After the hike, you'll arrive back to your lunch and it will be so good. And then you have a couple of hours to swim in the water, play drinking games, and lounge in the sun. And if you don't want to move too much with your food baby, I suggest sitting at the shore and let the water wash over and move you. It's really fun! But of course you get sand everywhere. At this point, you've been under the bright sun for hours, which brings me to mistake number 9. Neglecting to bring your sunblock. I didn't really get sunburnt, but some of the other ladies did, so bring your sunblock and keep applying it. And while we were swimming, another tour group came in, and it was perfect because guess what? They were all men. <laughs> so we invited them over to play juking games with us. And that was the tour. For dinner, I met with another solo traveler, Melissa, who you saw earlier on the tour. We ate at Mama's Grill, where they grill you all sorts of meats and veggies on the spot. So if you like barbecue, definitely go here. Next, head over to where the party is. Ask around where the party is every night because it always changes. At that night, it was Bianto Del Mar. I wasn't able to film this part because I left my camera at the table, but Melissa filmed it so you can watch it over on her channel. And just when I thought it couldn't get any better, day four happened. I went on the three island hopping tour, which you'll find out is pretty much a booze cruise and it's awesome. The first island you'll go to is Guiam Island where you get to chill, walk around, take pictures, or sit in the water and drink like I did. If you have portable speakers, definitely bring it on this tour. Everyone will love you. Next up is Naked Island. It's completely bare from trees but makes a nice picture if you're at the tail end. Last island is Duckle Island where you'll spend most of your time. This is where you'll get to eat lunch, drink at the beach, play drunk Jenga, frisbee, and beach volleyball. If you've been drinking since Guiam Island, so about 11am, you'll definitely be tipsy at this point. Everyone couldn't stop talking and laughing. A group of us connected really well, so after the tour, we met for dinner at La Carinderia and later again at Harana and Rumbar. I left on the morning of day 5, and I share with you my last and most important mistake to learn from. Number 10 not getting enough sleep and hydration. Can you imagine drinking straight from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. in two days? That's 30 hours total, and I did that under the hot sun. I nearly fainted by the time I arrived in Manila because I was so dehydrated. So seriously, always have a water bottle on you and get lots of sleep, lots of it. And that wraps up my solo female traveler guide to Shargao. And I hope you were able to learn a thing or two from my mistakes. So be smart and stay safe when traveling alone and get out of your comfort zone. Since starting traveling Petit Girl a year and a half ago, Shargao was the best trip I've had and it was the people who made it amazing. Solo travel doesn't mean you're alone the whole time. It means there's plenty of opportunities to make new friends and Shargao is the perfect place to do that. And guess what? I'll be back in the second week of July 2018, so come join me! And don't forget to watch Melissa's videos. She shows you things I wasn't able to film like the nightlife. All details of the guide are in the links below, so check it out. And if some questions came up for you, ask me in the comments and I'll definitely reply. So give me a thumbs up and comment if you liked the video and subscribe so you don't miss another one. Talk to you soon! I love you! Mwah.